Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of a whole lot of books on car modification. Here's one, Optimising Car Performance Modifications. How you can measure and see if your car performance modifications are going in the right direction. You're achieving the outcomes you really want, or conversely, you're just wasting time and money. And I've also written on aerodynamics, and I've also written quite a lot on electronics in cars. What I want to do in today's video is talk about how you control pump speed in a water-air intercooler system. Controlling a pump speed? Don't you just switch it on or off? Well, there are some subtleties to that that I'll get to in a moment. But first of all, what's a water-air intercooling system? Well, you have a heat exchanger under the bonnet, you have a heat exchanger at the front of the car, you have water that's connecting those two heat exchangers, and you have a pump there that controls the speed with which that water flows in the system. Water air intercooling systems have a lot of thermal mass. They have the ability to absorb a lot of heat before the intake air temperature actually starts to rise. And if you've watched any of my other videos on intercooling systems, you know I'm a real fan of thermal mass in intercooling systems, especially in road cars, where the time you're on boost is relatively low compared with the time that you're off boost. So if we can control pump speed, we can control how much water actually flows through the system connecting those two heat exchangers. Now you might say, well, wouldn't you just run the pump flat out all the time? Wouldn't that be best? There's two problems with that. Uh, the first is clearly you wear out the pump fairly fast, uh, and there's a second more subtle one. But before I get into those sorts of intricacies, how do you actually control pump speed? Well, you do that by changing the voltage of the feed to the pump. The simplest way of doing that is to use a high wattage resistor. You switch the electricity flow through that resistor, the pump speed is lower, you bypass that resistor and the pump speed is higher. And in fact, I once owned a car with a factory water air intercooling system and that's exactly how they did it. They had a big high wattage resistor and they switched that in or out of the feed. But these days you can control pump speed much more subtly, much more small graduations than just half speed or full speed. And you can do that with a programmable ECU using a pulse width modulation output. In that way, you can have the voltage vary from, say, 3 or 4 volts right up to battery voltage. So you've got all those different speeds that you can actually run. Now, why would you want to change the speeds? Well, let's start off by saying perhaps you live in a really cold country. You jump into the car, you start the engine, um, the intake air temperature might be well below freezing point. You don't actually want to run the intercooling system, you want to warm up the intake air, which will give better fuel atomization, better drivability, and so on. So in those conditions, you would actually leave the pump off. Now let's run with that example. You're driving around, the, the water in the uh, underbonnet heat exchanger is getting warm uh, as the air is passing through, the engine intake air, that's good. And then you put your foot down, you go up to high boost. Now, if we switch the pump on, let's think about what happens. All the water in the rest of the system is quite cool. The water, the slug of water that's in the underbonnet heat exchanger has got warm, but when we turn the pump on, that water's gone and it's replaced with quite cold water because that water hasn't already been circulating through the system, it's just been sitting there, uh, getting cooled by the outside air passing through that front, front radiator. So you can see in that situation, you actually get cooler intake air on boost when you've had the pump switched off up until the point where it actually needs to pull that cold water through. So there's one example where you wouldn't run the pump all the time, you'd run it only when the intake air temperature rose above a certain level. So getting the intake air temperature to actually rise to your designated level is quite important and people forget all about that. Um, in the real world, better fuel economy, better fuel atomization and so on. What about when you're on boost and the intake air temperature is getting up? You know, you've been on boost a lot. Then you want to increase the pump speed, increase the pump speed. And when the intake temperature rises to whatever figure you nominate, in one of my cars, I have it at about 45 degrees Celsius. So it's about 105, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I then run the pump at 100% duty cycle. I run the pump flat out. So running the pump at differing speeds, depending on the conditions the car is experiencing, one, saves the pump from wearing out too fast, as they tend to do if they run at full speed all the time. And B, you can actually get better drivability by rather than trying to keep the intake air temperature as icy cold as possible, you actually try and keep it around the same intake temp. And in one of my cars, I, I run it, I try and hold intake air temperature at about 30 degrees Celsius. So what's that, about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I try and keep it there as much as possible. 
If the temperature is above that, I'm running the pump uh, at higher speed. If the temperature is below that, I'm running the pump at lower speed, you know, right down to having the pump off for quite a lot of the time, especially in winter. So being able to vary the speed of the pump means you can control intake air temperature rather than just trying to have it as low as possible, even when having it as low as possible isn't going to be advantageous to the way the car drives. Now, I run a, a, a 2D map in my Motec uh, M400 which I'm using to control uh, the engine management in that car and on one axis I have throttle position and on the other axis I have intake air temperature so I'm also basing it on how much I've got my foot down if I don't have my foot down much uh, I don't run the pump even when the intake air temperature is, is climbing but if I have my foot down and the intake air temperature is high then obviously I run the pump at much higher duty cycles run the pump at a higher voltage in other words it's fun and it's interesting, and if you have a fast response intake air temperature probe, you can really make some quite logical decisions about what you want the system to do. And of course, a water air system with a variable speed pump has all that flexibility, which an air air system doesn't have. If you do have a water air in, uh, intercooling system and you aren't controlling pump speed, even if it's only two or three speeds by feeding it through resistors, then that's a really good thing to look at because you can make a real change to the way the car drives by trying to hold intake air temperature at your designated level rather than just running the system flat out all the time. My name's Julian Edgar. Uh, the book where uh, I talk about some of these things, not all of them, but some of these things is optimizing car performance modifications. And I talk in this book, Car Electrical and Electronic Systems, I talk in more detail about running variable speed pumps, variable speed fans and things of that sort. Thank you.